Hey, what's going on guys? It's Dave. In this video, I'm going to show you two very important things. One, how to set up your own SSH server, whether it's on some server somewhere or locally on your laptop, machine, desktop machine, whatever. My first caveat comes as the very first point, though. Uh, if you install OpenSSH server on a machine, you will be running the SSH service, and that basically opens a port and makes you a little bit more vulnerable. So if you're doing this on like your home laptop or something, and you then go take it to an airport network or a Starbucks network or something, people will be able to try logging into your machine. So you will probably get attacked. Do this at your own risk, but generally it's fine. Especially the way I'm gonna show you how to set up SSH, the server, is more secure than its default configuration. We're gonna do this with key-based logins as opposed to password-based logins. So got a shell open here you can see port 22 is open that would be the SSH daemon and this is just running the default configuration so the first step you would do on Ubuntu uh, this package might be called something else in different Linux distributions but this is the open SSH uh, so the open BSD SSH daemon server obviously it's already here already running so you don't need to do that, but that would be the first step on your own machine. The second step, uh, well, we can go ahead and look at the configuration file here for a second. So etc, like most of our configuration stuff, ssh, and then sshd config. You're going to have to be a root to make changes to this, just so you know. Default port is 22, it's the default ssh port. Root by default is, you can set this to no, but without password it's fine. Um, that's if you don't want root to be able to log in over SSH at all. I would maybe set this to no, but without password right now. You can see public key and RSA authentication are set to yes. That's what we'll be using. Empty passwords are by default set to no, and Password authentication is still set to yes. We will set this to no very soon. But I want to just demonstrate before we do that what logging in would look like. Actually, sorry, we'll have to get the IP address from this thing first. 3170. So, SSH, username at remote host. Since we're still running it on port 22, we don't have to add a port argument. It's understood. And then we log in. So you can see this works. Now we're going to log out for a second. And we're going to have to do something on our client. You need to create a cryptographic key pair using public key cryptography. That means it's a key pair where one half is public and one half is private. And you're free to share the public key. And by using that public key, people can recognize that it's really you, the person with the private key. So it's a very safe way to log into servers. You share your public key with them, and then later they can recognize you by sort of posing some question with the public key, and only the person with the private key, the other half of that key, can someone answer. That's a very simplified version of that, but uh, look up public key cryptography if you're interested. So we're going to create a key pair on our client that is on the machine that's going to be doing the logging in to the server. So SSH keygen type RSA, it's going to be an RSA key with 4096 bits. It's a 4 meg key. It's going to be a big old key. I like, you don't have to add this option, but the default size is smaller. I think it's 2 megs, so I like to bump this up to 4. The default place for this is fine. Generally, you won't need more than one key pair. And here's the really important part. Your passphrase has to be incredibly strong, not just a password. Because key-based authentication makes things more secure and convenient and wonderful because you can log into a million servers with the same key, it also creates a terrible, terrible single point of failure. If someone hacks into your machine with your private key, they steal your private key, they can go ahead and log in to all the machines that you have access to. This would be bad. So your passphrase is the only thing sort of protecting your key once someone steals it. So you need to make this extremely strong. It'll go ahead and create the key for you, show your key's fingerprint, and then you've got a key. We can list it in here. 
So this would be the public key, dot pub. And this is the private part, which you should never, ever, ever paste, share, show, do anything with that's public. Okay, this stuff only works if you really keep this private. So now we have to get this key onto the server somehow. A really nice way to do that is by using SCP, which is a utility that uses SSH to securely copy something through an SSH tunnel from your machine to some server. So we're copying your public key. This works just like copy. The syntax is the same. So file to be copied is the first argument, and then destination is the second argument. And in this case, destination is remote, so we're saying Ubuntu at 10.03.170, colon, and that's when you give the path to where you want that file, home, Ubuntu, okay? It'll ask us for the password again, and then copy the file. Good, so our file's over there. We'll switch back to the server. We're back on the server. We're going to log out as root and go back to Ubuntu. I'll have to clear the screen. So now you can see we've got that public key sitting here, and we've also got our SSH directory. You can create this if you don't have it. You can just do a make deer.ssh. If you do that, remember to set uh, chmod 700 on it. So change mode. Sorry, 700 SSH. All right, just to be sure. And that will make sure that only the owner can read it and nobody else has any rights. This is just a security precaution. Obviously, you don't want anyone to be able to read your directory. So, so you can see in this case, the authorized keys file is actually readable. Uh, we'll just do a recursive chmod 700. So not just the um, directory, but everything underneath it will also be changed. So if we list again, you can see only root has access. Uh, and then we'll switch out that authorized keys files. There, there's a key in there now, but we're going to just blow it away. So we can actually just do copy this to SSH authorized keys. So there we've got it. If you're adding more keys, like if you want seven or eight people or a hundred to be able to log in, with their SSH keys, you'll have to add their keys individually to the file by echoing into it or what have you. So you can see, here's that one, that first key on the first line, and you could add other keys here. If that makes sense. Good. So now we need to change the configuration on the server. We've added a key that can now log in but we're still accepting password logins and we need to turn that off. So we'll go into the sshd config again. We'll change this to port 443. This is just for fun, you don't have to do this. I like to do this because it allows me to use the server for uh, tunneling for like a SOX proxy or something when I'm on a foreign network because 443 and 80 are almost never blocked. So I tend to use those ports so I can tunnel out through them. A lot of networks, like coffee shops or, or uh, airports, the two examples that I always use will block port 22, so you won't be able to connect to your server. If it runs on 443 or 80 or something like that, you will be able to connect. Good, so there's three things we have to change to turn off password-based authentication. The first, we just search for a challenge response. This is already off. You want this to say no, not yes. The second is password authentication change that to no. And the third, I think it's usually at the bottom, is use PAM no, and that's also already correctly set. So again, challenge response authentication no, password authentication no, use PAM no. Go ahead and save that. I am dumb dumb. Hang on. This is what happens when you forget to ride with sudo. Uh, so I think password is the only thing we had to change because everything else was already set. Yep, that looks right. So save that file. And now you're going to have to restart the SSH service. So there you go, you can see it stops, rereads the configuration, and then restarts itself. Just to check to make sure So the reason it's actually on 22 is because I didn't change that in the 
configuration file, I changed it the first time, but then I couldn't save it. Edit it again as root and forgot to change this back to 443. So we can do that, but I'm just going to leave it out for now. I'll show you how to do that when we're talking about setting up a SOX proxy for real. So I'll show you how to configure the server correctly. And one of the things for that is generally you'll want SSH listening on either 80 or 443 or something else that you're reasonably sure won't be blocked on a hostile network. Good. So back to the client. And from here, we should be able to log in now. And we definitely shouldn't be able to log in without the key. So let's give that a try. I'll clear the screen. Let's see if I don't enter the key passphrase and don't unlock the key. You can see the server says, sorry, dude, permission denied. We're looking for public keys or key-based authentication, I should say. So we'll try it again. Enter our keys password, and we're in. Hooray. That's basically the long and the short of it. It's not too complicated. Again, just to review, you need a client SSH key. So that's with SSH keygen. You need the server config accepting key-based authentication. And optional, server denies password authentication. Share the client public key with the server in the user's home. So whatever home you want to get into, SSH authorized keys. So the authorized keys file specifies what keys may log in as that user whose home it's in. That about does it. That's the basics of setting up your own SSH machine. Again, the two really important things are, remember you're opening a network port and running a service, which inherently could be dangerous. And two, anytime you're working with cryptographic keys, make sure that the password protecting your keys is incredibly strong. All right, cool. If this is helpful, give it a like, subscribe. Uh, there is more to come in the SSH video series, and this obviously is like the foundation for everything else we're gonna do.